Thank God it's Monday. Today we're going to apply the Word of God to our lives. And we looked yesterday into Exodus 40. This is the first time God tells His people how to build a house for Him. They build a tent. God's presence filled the temple. And from therefore, the, the whole people of Israel had a place where God was resting permanently. And when He would move, the tent would move with Him. Now here's what's interesting. Of all places that God could have chosen to have a home in, He could have chosen temples, great you know, people of, 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 of any time of history. Why would He choose the people of Israel who were only able to give Him a tent? Here is one answer. God doesn't need great things to make things great. He can use a simple stone and it becomes the house of God. He can be born into a manger and it becomes the birthing place of the king of the world. God doesn't need great things to make things great. And so you and I, if we're normal, awesome. If we're not great, awesome. Because you and I, if we become the house of God, greatness comes into our lives. Not because you and I are great, but because God is great. And he can make any place his home. Oh, that we would be the house of God. Number two, the house of God is a temporary thing. That's a tent, right? Tents are not, temp you know, they're not structures that are meant to stay forever in the same place, in the same way. Here's what Paul says about this whole world. For we know, this is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1, for we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The house of God is a tent because it points to the more permanent solution. It points to heaven. Connect groups, church, whatever we do as a church, it should point to heaven, to the reality that something greater is waiting for us. You know, the greatest things that you can experience in your life they're actually just temporary experiences. They're actually pointing to the bigger thing, to the greater thing, to the house that is permanent, to home, to heaven. The house of God is a tent because it's meant to be built from the inside out. Houses are built from the outside in. You build a, you build a fun, fun foundation, you build a structure, you build a roof, and then you start to build it from the inside, right? But tents are being built from the inside out. Church is a, is a place that is being built by obedience from the inside out. Where, where uh, Moses, when Moses builds the tabernacle, it says that he first starts with the Ark of the Covenant, then closes the Holy of Holies, then builds the holy place, and then step by step from the inside out, that's how he builds it. And every time he finishes one part, it says this sentence in Exodus 40, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The house of God is build, being built by obedience from the inside out. Not from the outside in where God says, you do this and if we don't do this, then I will, right? It's not, he's not forcing Moses to do this. It's something that is laid in his heart and he's building the house of God. Oh, that we would build the house of God through obedience. The house of God is made for encounter. From that day on, the people of Israel have a place where they can meet intimately with God. Obviously, this only applies at, at that time to the high priests who once a year through many, many rituals can access, access God. But one day at the cross, when Jesus says, it is finished, the, the, the access to the Holy of Holies rips open because God rips this curtain apart that had blocked kind of the entrance for everybody. When Moses is finished, when, when the Old Testament shadow of Jesus, Moses is finished, the presence of God fills the house of God and nobody can enter. That's what it says here in, in, in Exodus 40. But when Jesus finished, everybody can enter. Everybody can enter to the intimate place of meeting God. When was the last time you had an encounter with God? The house of God is a tent because it is made, meant to move. Every time the cloud would lift, they would pack the tent down and they would move with the presence of God. When was the last time you felt moving with the presence of God? Let's be a church that stays, stays 
agile, ready to respond to whatever God is doing. So here's a question to, to work in your connect group. How about you discuss this? What have you seen God doing lately in your life? It's a question to the, to the, to the cloud, right? Where is God in your life? What is he doing? Because that's where we should be moving. If you're doing this by yourself, ask yourself, when was the last time I felt that God wanted me to do something for him? An act of obedience. And then ask yourself, how can I make this from the inside out? What needs to be transformed in me so I can truly build a tent, the house of God? God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.